Ryan. No. Motor coupling attached. A little test spin of our flywheels. We're almost set. Just one more thing. We weren't going to do this without an explosion. I'm adding in our explosion right now. Eight liters of gasoline wrapped in deck cord to give ourselves a good finale. Our Neo Panjandrum is ready for its maiden and perhaps final voyage. We'll use this electric car motor right here to spin these up oh, like this. When we all feel slightly uncomfortable, we put the brakes on the thing. They're going to transfer the energy from these discs to the forward momentum of the Panjandrum. Ooh, this. How hard it was for me to stop that, that's the kind of energy we're applying to this guy. And we expect it to start rolling up this hill at maybe 40 miles an hour, and once it goes through the target, we get to blow it up. Dude! <laughs> I love it. Let's go fire this thing off. Yeah, let's do it. As with my professional life, really all I see are the failure modes. And there are so many of those. We've got imbalance in the flywheels. They could literally shake themselves so much. We rip the axles apart. We could rip free of our moorings before we're ready to. We could literally break the wheel structure by bouncing and rolling. I really hope this works. I love the design of the Panjandrum. Frankly, this thing could do almost anything, and I will be happy. The only thing it can't do is not leave this deck. The firing system has been armed. You have control. All right, so here we go. Marcos, you're on throttle. I am. John Marcoux, you're on motor disengagement. Yes, sir. Adam Stelsner. You are on the brakes. You're making this thing go. OK. All right, I'm pulling the final quick release and detonating it when it reaches our target. When, not if, it reaches our target. OK, here we go. Mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> This is it. We are seconds away from deploying our new and improved Panjandrum. Our target speed for launch is 1,000 revolutions per minute. 300 RPM, keep going, keep going. Looks good. This is about as fast as we got in our test back in the shop. I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of shake. Yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of shake either. I'm not seeing a lot of shake at all. This is apparently going swimmingly. 400 RPM. 400 RPM! If we can get to 1,000, that's when Four. we launch. OK, I'm seeing oscillations. Oh, yep, yep, we're yep. Starting, to, starting to oscillate. 580, keep going. 700 RPM. There it is, there, there's a the shake. Almost 800 RPM. You can hear things go. OK, I think we should go. I think we should go. OK, John Marku, let's disengage the motor. Coming up, coming up. There it is. Oh, shot okay. off. Motor's off. Motors away? Motors away. Motors away. It's moving. There it goes. OK, follow me, follow me. It's rolling, it's rolling. Come on, baby. Okay, stand back, stand back, stand back. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. No, Pan Are you kidding no. me? What did you say the worst thing that could happen was? Why? Why you no move forward? Who figured this thing out anyway? <laughs> Whose idea was this? <laughs> this is pure science. We were testing a hypothesis about locomotion. I know, but the hypothesis is backed by mathematics, which should have driven that thing really harder. fast. Even at 500 RPM, it should have hopped up this hill. At 500 RPM, it should have gotten up to 20 miles an hour. Yeah. 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 So what happened? Oh, I don't really know. I do not have an answer. I'm going to go back over my equations three or four times and see what the hell I did. We need to be clear to approach and check in on the drive system. 
On closer examination, Adam Stelzner is pretty certain he's identified the culprit responsible for our failure. So what I think went down is our braking system wasn't strong enough to instantaneously transfer that energy, and so it diminished the energy of the wheels before it could really effectively transfer it to the big wheel. We simply didn't brake hard enough, fast enough. So underpowered brakes coupled with lower RPMs than we'd hoped for resulted in a failure to launch. My regular job is to figure things out, invest billions of dollars, <laughs> and have them work every time. Copy. So um, this is an, usual, an unusual experience for me. Look, I totally understand that that is your business model. In my business model, when things don't go right, we have a different kind of ritual than you do. Detonating Neopangendrum in three, two, one! Isn't that a nice way to finish out a build? <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh, that was great. Oh, it almost makes you cry. It does. I feel like crying. <laughs> Bring it in. <laughs> Give us some sugar. Thank you. <laughs> That's the smell of not victory, <laughs> but at least. Completion. It's the smell of completion. <laughs> it feels like our experience is at least authentic, if anticlimactic. Yes. As the sun sets on our day and our panjandrum, it's kind of a fitting end that it's sitting there smoldering 15 feet from the ramp on which it started. So the World War II panjandrum was famously a bust, and this week we have expended a huge amount of time and energy continuing in that grand tradition. <laughs> Our panjandrum was just as ineffective as the original, even though it had a brand new design. But I am not sad. I always love the experience of walking through a path already trodden by engineers from the past, and it gives me a view of the world through their eyes, and that widens my understanding of the world, whether things work at the end or whether they don't. And that's the whole purpose of this journey. That's what happens when you test stuff. Sometimes it ends like that. <laughs>